there's sort of two schools of thought. There's kind of the Japanese sort of what I would say is development driven. So you have companies that are focusing purely on development and then the marketing will come second. And then there's more of the Western way, which quite frankly is marketing led and you'll see huge marketing budgets. And that's how it, it, it seeps into the development process as well. So as an example, um, we had a game design document this thick for Eternal Darkness. It was massive. It had the story. It had all the game design. It had the spell system, had the sanity system. We had all of that stuff in this massive document. And when we were pitching it in Nintendo of America, they wanted all that stuff. Okay. But um, we talked about marketing and how it was going to go when we went to Japan to get it approved because that's where approval came from Miyamoto-san and uh, the group there. First thing Miyamoto-san said is, I'm not reading anything. <laughs> Give me a controller and I'll tell you if we're going to move forward, which is terrifying. But also at the same time, you have this level of confidence that, you know, if you do something good, they'll recognize it. Um, and that's development driven philosophies. There are few companies who do that. Nintendo's one of them. There are others out there, but they're the rare exception, which I personally like. And that's why people, I still, to this day, even if you look at Dead House Sonata, first thing we did was a combat prototype. It's got nothing to do with the game, but here's the combat. And we got feedback from our community. We'll continue to go in that way. It was very development driven. Where a lot of the West is very marketing driven. So a lot of games with literally no foundation whatsoever, but all of these big ideas and big graphics and lots of money being spent and really good marketing campaigns and catchphrases. Um, that's how most games are made. And that's very Western. So you you have the the marketing and the positioning of it and the idea of the game supersedes everything. Where, and I, I'm just not that comfortable with that kind of thing. So I'm always about, you have to have a, a sort of one of the rules uh, that I learned very quickly. What you're doing the most in a game needs to be engaging, enjoyable by the player. So you start really small and you build out from it. That's very Japanese. Um, where a lot of other games are like, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And there's no pro there's prototyping, but it's all, it's all more it's minor. Of a, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't seem like a sustainable model to be honest, to do it that way, but clearly <sighs> it's, I, I guess it's working though. It does work. It does work. It's surprisingly, it's surprisingly effective. And what happened, what tends to happen is you get some good ideas that actually have a good development team and those percent stick. Um, and it, it's, it's just the way the industry is. So there are way more failures in the West than there are in say Japan, hmm. but that's because in Japan, they'll prototype something out for a couple of years. And then once they're somewhere, they'll actually build it into a full title and go. That's very, that happens a lot within Nintendo and, and a lot of things people don't know where in North America, uh, in the West or in Europe, just tons of games get green light and tons of games get canceled, <laughs> right? And you you sometimes hear about them, sometimes you don't. But there will be, like Call of Duty is a really good example of a very good dev team that came across, uh, upon a really good marketing idea and then boom, they all came together. Or Grand Theft Auto, another really good yeah. example of a really good idea with a good dev team but a lot of the times it's usually a good idea with a bad dev team or um, a really good developer with a bad idea and some good market. It, it's, it's, but 90% of those will fail. And you just, um, <laughs> you'll see when Nintendo comes out with a game, usually um, I think there's a higher level of confidence from the consumer yes. that it's going to be good. And that's because Nintendo cares and it's their development philosophy brings that way. And those are the kind of things that, you know, I agree with too. And you see that, from Sony as well, from their internal studios, you know, so you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of that. And then where you have um, some of the Western companies like Microsoft, um, you're seeing just a ton of titles. Some will hit, some won't, but it's, it's kind of like a, a mass, um, <laughs> just a, a mass foray into just a ton of titles, a ton of development um, where one is more quantity over quality is the way I would describe it. So, mm. And there's not neither or bad. I'm not criticizing either way. It just seems 
those are the ways that I would qualify the differences.